we're back again, and my daughter Annette is with me again uh, on the broadcast. I've really enjoyed having you with me to uh, teach you and all to bounce this thing off of uh, somebody else and get their comment on it. It's I'm really excited about the word and what we're going to talk about today because uh, uh, we're going to talk about the power of words. And uh, over the last 30 years, after I tapped into some of this revelation. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot of things, and I know you have too. Uh, uh, you were there when I got a hold of this word, and I know a lot of people looked at me like, what has happened to him, you know? <laughs> and uh, uh, like the fellow said, nothing but the Word of God. I mean, what's got <laughs> into you? Just the Word of God. And I believed it to be true. So uh, we're going to talk about the power of words. And uh, I want to read the Scripture in John chapter 1. Uh, that is really a powerful scripture. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, and that you've heard people say this, well, these faith folks just try to make the Word God. <laughs> well, why in the world would we try to do that? Here it says, in the beginning, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So why would we try to make it God? See, God's Word is God over every situation, every circumstance in life. If we would just keep it in our mouth, get it in our heart, and believe it, dare to say and believe. Jesus said if you had faith as a seed, you would say. say, you would uh, say. The problem is some folks don't have faith as a seed. They say, well, I'm trying to have faith. Well, you don't get faith by trying to have. You, you, faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And Paul said in Romans 10, it's in your mouth and in your heart. And then in 17, he said, so then faith comes the hearing. So if it's in your mouth and in your heart, it seems like he's saying you get it in your mouth, it'll get it in your heart much quicker than hearing somebody else say it. Anyway, let's read this again. In the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Him who? Him the Word. And without Him, without the Word, was not anything made that was made. Now that's how important understanding God's Word is. Now you understand we're talking about God's Word now. All things were made by Him, the Word. Without Him, the Word, was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. You know, David tapped into it. He said, the entrance of the Word bringeth light. Because the Word is with God. The Word was God. It's the same as if God were in you when the Word abides in you. But it has to abide in you. And then he goes on, light shineth in darkness. Darkness comprehended it not or could not prevail against it. Then we come over to verse uh, 14. It says, the Word was made flesh. I think the Greek says, the Word took upon itself flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory as the glory uh, only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Then down to verse 16, And of His fullness have we received grace for grace. For the law came, was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the importance of words is, is laid out right here, so vivid till uh, it would be hard to misunderstand that. That's true. It reminds me uh, a few years ago, uh, a woman that I had just met came up to me and she said, do you know, you know uh, about the Bible, don't you? I mean, she knew nothing about me. She said, I just have the impression you know something about the Bible. And I said, yes. She said, is there anything in the Bible anywhere that talks about the importance of your words and what you say? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> and I just had to, opening. I had to laugh at that. I thought of all the people in the world that she would ask that question to, she asked me, which of course you've been teaching this for years. And so I just opened my mouth and I gave her several scriptures and she said, thank you. She said, I have a friend who has her doctorate in theology and she told me there's nothing in the Bible about the power of your words or what you say. And she said, I just knew because I hear people saying all the time things like, that just kills me, that tickles me to death, uh, that just provokes me, that burns me up. And she said, when they say that, it upsets me so much 
that I just say, don't say that, don't say that. Whatever you do, don't talk like that. And she said, they all look at me and go, why? <laughs> and she said, now I can tell them why they shouldn't be saying those things because the Bible is full. The Bible is the Word and it's full of the importance of our words and God's Word. This is the manufacturer's handbook. And uh, we've been created in His image and in His likeness. You only have to go back and read Genesis 1 to find out how He created. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. And ten times in Genesis 1, I believe it, it says God said. Uh, you know, why, why didn't He just say God said and say all the things God said? He wants you to get a hold of the fact that God released His faith in words that brought creation. Uh, Let's put it this way. Uh, his, his words were containers that carried His faith out there into the darkness and called light out of darkness and, and created everything you see. Everything you see was created with words. Everything starts with words. Somebody started with words about this table. Let's build a table. Somebody said, how big? <laughs> and it, it started with words. So the importance of words and how, how it's used here in Colossians, let me read this scripture. And uh, it says, uh, verse 14, well, now let's back up a few verses. Verse 12, Give thanks unto the Father which has made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Oh, that's good news right there, isn't it? How do we know He did that? Because of His Word. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, in Jesus, in other words, for by Him were all things created, things that are in heaven, things that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. In other words, Scripture says in Hebrews, He upholdeth all things by the word of His power. In other words, it tells you where His power is, in His word. My, my. Well, Hebrews 4.12, of course, says the word that God speaks, or the word of God, is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. That's pretty sharp. That's pretty quick. That's pretty powerful. And if God's word is that quick and that powerful, then when we give voice to His Word, we are releasing the force of energy of God's own Word. We are releasing Him on the earth when we speak His Word. It's not only quick, it's live, a living it's alive. substance. And uh, you know, the thing that I saw in that a few years ago was the fact that uh, it, the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharp as a two-edged sword, discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. The Word can discern the thoughts and intents of your heart every time you hear it. That's the reason you can listen to this tape or this, uh, of this broadcast ten times in a row, and it'll minister something to you different every time because you have different thoughts, different intents, and the Holy Spirit takes that Word, same Word, and ministers to you in a different way. You, you cannot exhaust the Word of God. Somebody said, well, I've read that. Read it again. <laughs> you yeah. know, quote it, proclaim it, get it out there, uh, speak it out of your mouth. Uh, but, but it discerns the thoughts and intents of your heart. Well, how many times uh, being raised in church have I read the Bible from cover to cover, and yet it wasn't until about 19, seven, was it 72 or 73, that we heard the message of faith and about the power of God's Word and about the importance of our Word. And here we read the Bible all these years and never got it, never understood that principle of the Kingdom of God, that your words are powerful. Yes. And you know, Jesus was called the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, he is still the Word of God. He'll, he'll have Word of God only when He comes back. He was the personification of the Word. Uh, the Scripture says, The Word took upon itself flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word of God is equal 
to God when it comes to uh, circumstance and situation. I'm talking about God's Word that He has spoken, promise of God. Uh, and, and this is made very real. Uh, turn there and read from uh, uh, Romans 10 uh, about the uh, 10th verse where it starts, starts talking about uh, uh, Christ is an end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Uh, that's Romans 10, verse 4. It says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Yeah. Now, he says uh, the righteousness wouldn't, uh, which is a faith wouldn't say that we'll have to get Jesus back in his physical flesh, blood, and bone body so he could minister to us, get us healed, or to help with our finances. But he said, what does it say? It sa he says, the Word is as close to you as getting it in your mouth and speaking it into your heart. Now, that's what he's telling you, the, the Word of promise. It's first in your mouth, then it gets in your heart. Now, that's where it works. Faith works in the heart. If you read a couple verses down, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and, the, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Uh, word salvation there doesn't mean just be saved. It, it's an all-inclusive word that means deliverance from temporal evils, preservation, healing, and soundness, total prosperity. In other words, you can believe with your heart and be born again, but if you want to be delivered from temporal evils and healed and, and all of these things while you're here on earth, better get your mouth in motion. He said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in thy heart, God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. Uh, so you confess Jesus is Lord. But if you want deliverance, preservation, and healing, get your mouth in motion, speaking, quoting, and proclaiming what the Word said about you. And it, it changes that image inside you. And, and that's what these little booklets, God Creative Power booklets are for. They're workbooks. Uh, you confess the Word until it gets on the inside of you, and it creates an image there. Well, there's two different manners of speaking. I've heard you say before, and one of them, of course, is speaking the word and commanding and taking dominion with your word and, and speaking the word that causes things to change. But before you get to that por point normally, you need to take your own words, your own tongue, your own mouth, and say God's word until it builds the faith on the inside of you till you reach that point that you believe that what you're saying has come to pass. So there's two different things there. There's the yeah. speaking the Word into your heart, mm -hmm. and then building up to a level of faith, and then speaking forth the Word of faith that changes things. Yeah. I, I taught a series one time. In fact, I think we're going to offer it. It's, it's called uh, Faith, Words, and Things. God's Word produces the faith for the things that He's given you in the promise. Uh, so you confess the Word, Say what the Word says, because faith cometh by hearing. And by the way, it comes more quickly if you hear yourself saying it, giving voice to God's Word. It gets in your spirit much quicker. And uh, then it produces faith for the things that God has given us. And 2 Peter chapter 1 says He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Well, that didn't leave a whole lot out, did it? I mean, everything that pertains to life and godliness, He's already given, belongs to you, but it's like your bank account. You're never going to benefit from it unless you make a demand on it. How do you make a demand on your bank account? You write a check. It's called a demand note. <laughs> you demand, and, and because it's your money, they'll give it to you. But you can't talk them out of it. You go down to the bank and tell them, if my money's not too busy, I'd like to get $100. <laughs> well, they say, well, sign a check. No, I won't sign that. It's my money, isn't it? Yeah, it's your money. Well, give me $100. No, it, there's, there's certain ways you go about withdrawing that fund. And, and you could leave that in the bank for years and benefit nothing from it unless you make a demand on it. In the same way concerning the promises of God. God's already given it, belongs to us. It went into effect when Jesus died. 
and he was the testator. He's the only fellow that made out a will, died to put it into effect, rose from the dead to make sure it's carried out like he said. Anyway, it, <laughs> he could decide, I'll give you time to talk just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, good preaching. But, but anyway, that word gets in your heart when you speak it out of your mouth. And it does something to the human spirit that nothing else does. And it creates the image inside. And once you can see it, you can live out the reality of it. But, it. but you have to build that image with the Word. Well, I know I can remember back before you understood these principles, even as a child, I remember the times when the crops weren't producing well. Yeah. And when certain bad things happen in life, you have a tendency to talk like that. You have a tendency to talk about the bad things that are happening. And I remember at one point you saying, and you still talk about that, that it doesn't matter if I plant a cotton seed on top of a fence post, a weed will grow up beside it and choke it out. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's just a good example of how far we can go in negativity with our words. And, you know, unless you understand these principles, then you do it and you don't think anything about it. You think you're just, it's what, what they call poor mouthing or po mouthing. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to talk, po talk po, you know, talk poor, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. And that, you say that, you might not have had that attitude first, but you had a crop failure, and then you started saying it, and you started talking about it. You went and sat down with the farmers at the cafe, and they were all talking about it. You joined in with them, and the Bible says, if any two or three on earth agree is touching anything, and y'all all agreed. <laughs> and. So that's what you put in your heart. So when you got a hold of this, then you had to reprogram all that you'd put in your spirit. It took weeks and months and years on some things. I remember uh, my Uncle Joe, my favorite uncle, was in the, that restaurant one day, and it's raining, been raining for days, and, and everybody, all the farmers back there poor mouthing, you know. One of them says, if it don't quit raining, I'm going to go rob a bank. And Uncle Joe said, if it doesn't quit raining, I've already robbed one. <laughs> you know, he wasn't going to be able to pay his loan off. <laughs> but uh, uh, we all grew up in that, and I had to unlearn that stuff because I got so poor I couldn't pay attention talking that way. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when I, before I got a hold of this Word and confessed it and got it on the inside of me like Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will, say what you will, pray what you will, and it shall be done. But, but I had the devil's word in me. It don't make any difference what I do. It won't work out anyway. It don't make, I, if I plant my cotton that deep, it'll turn cold and rain. And uh, if I plant it that shallow, why, it'll turn off dry and won't come up. Found out it's a better profit than it was a farmer. Wasn't no profit in it, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, uh, somebody said, well, now, what you said didn't change the weather. That's right. It didn't change the weather. But it changed what I would do. Mm -hmm. See, I planted the seed. I'll do it the wrong way. You watch and see. And some of you have been saying it. If I ever get under pressure, I make the wrong decision. Yes, and you always will, as long as you say that. Jesus said you can have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart. And the more you say it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you say it. It feeds on itself. And that negativism will, will destroy your ability to progress in any direction. Because uh, it's like, well, it's like walking into an elevator on the first floor. You punch number one, you're going to stay there a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've got to call for what you don't have. And somebody said, well, you just got to say it like it is. No, you don't. The Bible says, say it the way you want it. Say to the mountain, be removed. Talk to the mountain. Don't talk about it, how it's hindering you. But anyway, when I, I, I got a hold of this and started saying some of those things, uh, I realized what caused my problems in finances back there years before. Because when I would say, I'll plant at the wrong depth and it won't come up, what I said didn't affect the weather. But when I got ready to plant, I started thinking, now, what am I going to do? Am I going to plant shallow deep? I felt led to plant it deep because it's going to turn cold and rain. I don't know that, but my spirit led me, not the Holy Spirit, because of the seed I planted. I'll do it wrong. So it said, find a way to cause him to do it wrong. So I am thinking about it, and I just feel like I ought to do it this way. I did it that way, it's exactly wrong. Just like I said. Mm -hmm. 
Isn't it amazing? Jesus knew what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> and, and when I began to change that, and it took a while to change it. If you remember, we, we, we'd catch each other, you know, and sometimes uh, uh, I'd catch Peggy, and sometimes I'd catch you, and then y'all would catch me, and uh, she was on the other foot then. But yeah, for, a, for a while, it was all a matter of, ah, ah, don't say that, don't <laughs> say that. You know, Mom, of course, would catch us, and she'd say, do you really want that to happen? Watch what you're saying. Yeah, I said one day, I said, we ought to tape a key under the bumper on the car because one of us is going to lock the keys in the car. She said, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I wanted to slap her, you know. I mean, it, it, <laughs> well, it didn't leave anybody but me. About four days or five, about a week later, I locked the keys in the car, just like I said. And uh, uh, it, it takes you a while to learn this stuff. But, but this word is practical. It's practical for the application in your everyday life. And uh, it's important to understand that Jesus said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask what you will, pray what you will, say what you will, and it shall be done. All things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. So we're only limited to what we can believe based on the authority of the Word of God. Well, one of the things I think that happens to people, like probably happened to you, is when you get into that negative frame of mind, you really believe all those things. You have actually attached yourself to those beliefs that bad things are going, going to happen. And so there come, there's a process where the first thing you've got to do is give it up. Give up the idea that you're going to always make the wrong decisions. Right. Because we become attached to our ideas and our beliefs because we've had them so long. Well, I've failed the past 10 years. What's going to make the next 10 years different? <laughs> well, the, what's going to make the difference is giving up that idea and taking on God's idea. And God's idea and God's word says that you can and you will make the right decisions as you declare His word and speak what He says. And that's that process of changing the heart. Yeah. Changing all that stuff that was in the heart about making the wrong decisions. You know, being a farmer for 29 years, uh, I learned some things about it that uh, the seed has dominion over the soil. Soil has no choice but to produce whatever you plant in it. And, and that's what Jesus talked about in the parable of sower. He said, the, the heart of man likes soil. It'll produce anything you plant in it. And he said, the sower soweth the word. And uh, then in another place he said, uh, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked and takes away that which was sown in his heart. The key phrase there is understand it not. If you don't understand it, somebody will talk you out of it. It doesn't necessarily mean to be the devil. It could be some well-meaning church member that doesn't understand it. But if, if you get that Word in your heart and you understand it and you know why you're confessing the Word, uh, it'll change your life. And it changes your situation and circumstances. It, nothing else will change almost. That's right. Well, in the book of Proverbs, there's so much in Proverbs about your words, the power of your words and having what you say. Uh, Proverbs 13 and verse Two says, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Mm -hmm. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. You can That's actually strong. lose your life by the words that you say. It says, but he that openeth as wide his lips shall have destruction. Yeah. So what you say can help make your life better or worse what you say, what you declare. And the first thing, you may say, well, I don't believe that I am healed. I don't believe that I am successful. I don't believe things are going to be better. If you can't believe it, you don't have the faith, then just shut up. <laughs> Confess the word. If, if, you, if you can't believe anything at this point, just don't say anything. Just zip it until you do say enough of the word of God. Make confession of God's word till it gets in your heart and then you can believe it. That's right. man said to me one time, he said, I'm just dying to go to Israel. I said, if I was you, I wouldn't go. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. And, and the way he's speaking, uh, I, 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 would, I didn't even want him to go over there because he's already prophesied death. But <laughs> it's important to understand that you can tap the tree of life or you can tap the tree of death. Proverbs tells us, and we'll get into it later, death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. So if you want to keep your life, you better get your mouth lined up with the Word of God. And we're out of time, and we want to make an offer this week that I believe will be a blessing to you. Well, this is one of my favorite series. It's called Words, Faith, and Things. And it's uh, two cassettes or two CDs for $12 plus $4 shipping and handling. And you can call our toll-free number at 1-877-396-9400 or go to www.charlescaps.com. And these two CDs are cassettes that you order. This is some excellent teaching talking about how your words can affect the things in your life to either bring what you need or to change any circumstance. We also have a DVD uh, of this available. If you would like to order it, you can call, and it's uh, broadcast number 8158. Give us a call if you'd like to have a DVD or VHS of this TV program. Words, faith, and things. God's Word produces the faith for the things that God has already given you. See, you know, I'm not talking about trying to get something God doesn't want you to have. God's Word produces the faith for the things that He's already given us, belong to you. But you have to make a demand on it by faith. You, you make a demand by faith. Faith demands what is, belongs to us uh, based on the authority of the Word. You're only limited to what you can believe based on the authority of the Word of God. So take the Word of God, confess the Word until faith comes. Then after faith is abundantly in the heart, you speak words with authority that absolutely will change circumstances and situations. But the first stages of it is causing faith to come and renewing your mind. It'll be a blessing to you. I tell you what, I've enjoyed this. And, uh, and uh, we've got to go. Uh, until next time, this is Charles and Annette Caps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, the Word is working mightily in me. We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, send your check or money order to Charles Capps Ministries. Or to place your order on Visa or MasterCard, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.